Hi, welcome to lesson nine. This is a fun lesson. We're going to make the card images change when we click on the deal button. So if you're ready, let's jump right in. So here I've got our War Card Game Xcode project. I'm looking at the storyboard and I'm gonna go ahead and select that left image view. Now in the attributes inspector on the right hand side, I'm gonna go to this image property and I'm just going to change it to a different graphic asset by choosing something different in this dropdown. Remember that what we're doing here is just an easy visual way to do the same thing that we could do through code. So essentially when I'm changing up this image asset, I am really just assigning a different graphic asset to the image property of this image view object. Now let's jump into our view controller and see how we can do that through code. Just as a reminder, we have references to those image view objects, right? We have the left image view and the right image view. I want you to also note that the type, you know, the class is UI image view. Okay, that is for displaying images. Let's jump down to the deal tapped method here. Let's erase this line and let's access our left image view. Using dot notation, we're going to access the image property. So hit dot, type image, and this is the same image property we were just flipping around in the storyboard, you know, changing that graphic asset. So to do the same thing through code, we would just assign, you know, a, a different graphic asset to this image property of the image view. I want to draw your attention to one thing here. On the left hand column right here, we can see the data type that this property expects. So this image property expects you to assign to it a UI image object. This is different from UI image view. UI image view is a element that displays UI image data and UI image is the data that represents the actual graphic assets. So essentially what we have to do here is we have to create a new UI image object and assign it to this image property. So let's just do it and you, it'll probably make a lot more sense than me just explaining it like this. All right, so go ahead, hit equals, and then we're going to create a brand new UI image object. Now keep in mind that you have to type it exactly how I have it right here because class names, uh, lowercase and uppercase do matter. So it, it needs to be capital U, capital I, capital I, and then lowercase m-a-g-e. Same thing goes for these property names. It has to be lowercase i image. So when you're watching me type this stuff out and you're getting errors on your own laptop or a computer, make sure that you're typing the right um, casing for your uh, property names and your class names. Also, another mistake I've seen is that you have to have spaces, like proper spacing. So make sure that you have a space before and after equal signs because you know this is not the same thing. All right, so what we've done here is we've created a brand new UI image object and we're assigning it to the image property of the image view. However, if we do this, we're really not going to see anything because this is just an empty UI image object. It doesn't actually have any image data to show. So the cool thing about this UI image class is that it's got a, a method where you can create a new UI image object while passing in some input parameter to tell what sort of graphic asset you want it to represent. So let me show you uh, let me show you what that is. So I'm going to open up a pair. Uh, I'm going to open up the first rounded bracket, and you can see all of these different functions. I'm going to scroll down, or this one. Find this one called named right here, and we are going to simply use that one here. Press enter, and we're going to be able to specify a graphic asset name. Now, we're going to choose one of the ones in here. Take note how you're spelling this. If you've just dragged my graphic assets in here, then they should be lowercase c with no space in between the D and the number. So let's say card five. 
lowercase c-a-r-d with the number five. It has to be exactly like that, otherwise it's not gonna find that graphic asset. So we're gonna type card five like that. So why don't we run our project right now just to see that appear. All right, so right now it's a three and a 10. When I click deal, it's going to execute this function here and it's going to set, uh, it's going to create a new UI image object grabbing the graphic asset here and then it's gonna assign that to the image property of the left image view object, which is this guy right here. So clicking deal there and that turns into a five which is really, really cool because that's the first time I think where you wrote code to influence what uh, happens in the user interface. So awesome. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the right image view. Right image view dot image is equal to UI image, right? And we're gonna just, you can actually start typing and it's going to narrow it down for you. So you can choose that. This time I'm gonna choose card uh, I think our upper limit is 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we've got up to card 14. All right, so I'm gonna run that. And this time, here, let me just put the code on the screen here. This time when I click on deal, we have the ace on the right-hand side and number five. Now, if I click on deal again, nothing's gonna change because it's always just running the same code, right? We need to, basically randomize these numbers so that every time we click deal, we get a different set of cards. So let me tell you about how to generate random numbers. It's actually quite easy. So we're gonna declare a new constant. Let's just call this like left number. And you know the int data type, it's actually got a method called random that we can use, right? And we can specify a range and we can say the lower range that we have, let's see, is two and the upper range is 14. So we want to specify a range between two to 14 inclusive. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna type two dot 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 14, right? No spaces like that. And we are going to then print the left number, all right? Now let's do the same thing with the right number. We're going to randomize another one. Same thing, two to 14. And then we're going to print the right number. So after you've typed that in, let's run our project. It's not going to change the images just yet, but it is going to print the random numbers to the console, just so we can see that we're doing this properly. I'm gonna move this over here so we can see. I'm gonna click the deal button. Oops, that's still covering it up. Oh, what's it doing? Oh, right here. I've got that little panel hidden, so click on this if it's hidden for you. There we go. You can see different pairs of random numbers generated. Now, the next step is how do we get these numbers into here? Well, all we have to do, actually first thing is let's comment these lines out so we're not printing them out into the console. And I would also, I um, want to point out that when you're commenting out lines of code like this, make sure that you clean it up after when you don't need it anymore. So you don't want to leave too much commented code lying around because it can look messy and um, it's just not a good practice to keep. Okay, so remember what we, uh, what we learned about inserting variables into strings. So it goes back to that. Instead of five here, we want to put left number. So I'm gonna erase five, erase five, put backslash, open up a pair of rounded brackets and insert left number as a variable, right? So the string is going to read card and then whatever left number is. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. Erase 14, backslash, put in two rounded brackets and I'm gonna put right number. All right. So let's erase these print statements. I don't think we need that anymore. Okay, so let's run our project here, see if we get the desired result. All right, let's go ahead and click on deal. So yeah, this is really cool. 
Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you are clicking this, you're randomizing the cards and you're seeing some blank space, like you're seeing a card that's just completely not there. What that means is that uh, it's looking for a graphic asset that doesn't exist in your asset library. So maybe your uh, double check your range, make sure that you know you have cards two to 14 and make sure that they're named properly. And maybe you might be even be missing that graphic asset completely. So check you have two, three, four, five, six, let's check that you have all of them. Because if you're randomizing and you see an empty card, you don't see the image, it either means that you don't have the graphic asset here or you've spelled it wrong so that you know, when you're trying to create this UI image object, it's not finding that graphic asset in your asset library. Oh, hey, I can't stop hitting this deal button. Now in this lesson, you learned about how to change the image of a UI image view using Swift code. You also learned about how to randomize numbers and how to insert variables into a string. Now I highly recommend that you download the recap notes by clicking on that card over there or in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this video, hit that bell icon too, then click on the thumbnail over there for the next lesson and I'll see you there.